Well, hello. I am Esteban Manureva from Salida Zamora, and I am here with your very best and only Christian Moreno Pacarati, and we are now in a new episode about uh, the narrative of Easter Island. Hey, welcome to Aku Aku Transmissions. Yeah, um, hi. Um, well, welcome to this uh, new episode of Aku Aku Transmissions. I think I lost count. I think it's episode four after the pilot. Well, doesn't matter. We are going to talk about something very interesting with Esteban Manureva, the great top tier guide uh, of this island, top tier uh, level. So um, we are going to discuss uh, about the... Um, New York Times article that just uh, appeared a few days ago that was written by Nick Casey. Um, it just appeared in the New York Times in the um, online edition. Right, You can search for it if you haven't seen it, but if you're here listening to this, you probably saw it already. And it's an article that talks about the erosion and about the risk that this island, the threat, the, the threat that's over this island due to um, global warming, rising sea level, and all of that, right? So, uh, well, Steve, as always, uh, did you read this? Uh, what's your imp first impressions of the article? Well, I, I think, in a sense, it's, uh, well, it was really well put out. It was, it was a nice presentation. It was readable, which was really interesting, right? It was easy to read. And... Uh, well, it tackled a problem that it's been going on since forever, which is the erosion of the islands, the rising of the oceans, and the natural just displacement of all the archaeological sites on the island that we've been tackling and trying to protect since forever. Yeah. So I think it's a nice way to 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 put in the spot, to put in the spot Easter Island back again, to to try to impulse the the, the the unique archaeology that we have here and to bring awareness of it so in that sense I think it's nice now also uh, I should, like should we should we go to the or should we kind of mention the positives and then go into the negatives yeah or, I think uh, we should we should I uh, and then a deconstruction maybe we should we, <laughs> we should deconstruct it a little bit and then see you know the positives and the negatives right? On the positive side, the only th one of the big things that I see is that again, like it put it puts the island in a big spot again. You know, like mm -hmm. it, it, everybody talks about it. It's in the spotlight. It's in it's on the spotlight, right? So that's nice. That's good. That's a positive thing. Yeah. It brings attention. That could bring new opportunities, new projects, new things to come. So yeah. I think that's a good thing. Definitely. So, well, I think, for example, in the positives of the New York Times article, it was, as, as you said before, it was well written. It has beautiful images, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Beautiful images. And it's so interactive. You move through it and you see the scale of the island and then you see some images uh, taken clear, clearly by drones, like yeah. uh, getting away from the island. You can see the rising seas and hitting the cliffs and eroding the cliffs mm -hmm. and how close some Moai are to those cliffs. Yeah. It's a, it's a really interesting article, right? Um, what it says, I mean, f fact checking, right? Most of the, of the information, in my opinion, is uh, actually true. Most of the information oh, yeah, that yeah. appears there. So, um, well, uh, I mean, New York Times. I'm not subscribed to the newspaper. I occasionally read a few articles here and there. But, uh, well, it lives up to this, its reputation, right, in that sense. So that's what I find the, the positives, of course. Yeah. And that the island's in the spotlight thanks to it. Well, obviously, we, we can dissect that a lot more. Right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, I guess that's for the positive, really. All right. Yeah, yeah that's for the positive. I'm like, sorry. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah, well, you, you should read it. Uh, you should take and, a look and, at it. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's nice. It's easy to read. Uh, and I think that's good. That's a good thing that everybody can read it and it's understandable. Yeah. You know? So yeah. like you can have a sense of what's going on. So th was there something that struck you as bad from the article? Like uh... nothing particular, but I believe that the the aftermath kind of like uh, uh, of the as you said as we were chatting before the you know major talking about all this stuff you know that he you know he's on the spotlight also right yeah. every all the government is on the spotlight but 
instead of being, you know, instead of, I'm not saying that we should point fingers on anything, you know, yeah. or anybody, because like, in a sense, every, everybody's to blame, because nobody did really much things about the these problems before, but, I mean, the fact that he's, He's uh, sort of victimized by the by the by this whole idea of of, of being unprotected. <coughs> you know, we could have done a lot of policies before this happened, and, and the municipality could have done a lot of things, but they never did. They I feel like they never cared before the the they never really cared before the whole New York Times article came out. Yeah. Before the like, this whole thing came out. But is is this the responsibility of the municipality of the island? No, not necessarily. But but yeah, we should have. There should be public policies for it. You know, even because like, you know, we've been having a lot of changes with the national park entities and you know UNESCO, and it's pretty much you know in the background doing nothing. You know, it's just a place name for the island. That's something that's I've always wondered about this, right? UNESCO. Uh, a UNESCO what, what are what are the benefits of being a UNESCO site? Uh, I, I wonder about this. Right? Well, I was go planning to mention UNESCO a little bit later in the conversation, but since we are at it, right? Uh, what are the benefits of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site? Because this island, uh, in case you don't know, uh, guys out there, um, is a World Heritage Site, as many sites in the world that yeah. are well recognized by this institution. But uh, uh, nobody I, here, I no, no one on the aisle. I mean, do you know what are the benefits of being World Heritage Site? I believe it brings responsibilities more than more than uh, benefits. It brings responsibilities for for islanders and, and, and the place itself that's taking care of it. Not okay, so real benefits like it's not like UNESCO is putting money to anything or anything like so that. So we we accept responsibility. So yeah. So we take it. Okay, UNESCO comes here. Oh, we come here to um, grant you World Heritage Site status, right? Yeah. And 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 you accept, and then uh, you money. only you only they get don't... responsibilities. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, which is so, partially good, but you know, because it, it it should it, we should. But how have does UNESCO how does UNESCO enforce that? Because there's, there's no there's no measurement. When was that. the last time a UNESCO person came here to check if their responsibilities are being? Honestly, uh, I don't even know if anybody has ever come since they declared it. That was ninety four or ninety five. About ninety six, I believe. No, I think it was earlier. I think yeah, it was uh, 95, 94 or ninety five. So, right, so. yeah. But since then, I mean, it's been so gone over time that I can't even remember. Okay, to be fair, UNESCO did a couple things. Um, UNESCO did this uh, whole UNESCO Japan project that was actually uh, money that was granted by a Japanese, Japanese government, government, yeah. government, around four hundred thousand dollars. And uh, well, UNESCO kind of helped to to uh, get it, to obtain uh, yeah, that to money make... from the Japanese government. So it was not UNESCO's money. I think UNESCO has no money. I think they don't have a, an account or anything. No, 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 I think no. it's uh, mostly volunteers. And... It's weird. United Nations, man. Yeah. They don't have money for... Well, whatever. So, uh, yeah, they did this UNESCO Japan project. 2000, 2001 mm -hmm. was around that time. Um, originally that money, I mean, this is what I heard, I'm sorry if I'm mistaken, I know there are different versions, you know, there's this whole battle between, uh, I don't know if, it, if, if it's, it's still ongoing, but, but back then in the day, between um, Gonzalo Figueroa, Rafael Rapu, right, and then on the other hand, Claudio Cristino, Patricia Vargas, about the Tongariki restoration. So a big chunk of those four hundred thousand dollars were used in uh, fixing the restoration of Ahutongariki, that was allegedly Ahutongariki, biggest monument in Polynesia, fifteen statues, it's flabbergasting. It's amazing. It's something that, that well, so it was restored in between ninety two and ninety six by the University of Chile, and then um, in ninety nine or two thousand, diagnosis was made that. It, there were lots of problems in the structural problems with the restoration. 
that were denied by the University of Chile people, and, but still in the end the diagnosis ended up being uh, accepted and uh, those $400,000 that were originally being used or were going to be used for the, or Sergio Rapu at least told me that he wanted to use it for the restoration of Ahu Tepito Cura or Ahu Oparo in the north coast yeah. with a huge statue, single statue but huge one in the end, that money had to be used to restore Tongariki, right? To, to fix the fix, restoration yeah. of Tongariki, um, which obviously the other people deny. And I heard from Patricia Vargas that she had this project to use those $400,000 of the UNESCO money to um, prepare, to help prepare uh, younger people on the island to learn how to restore sites and educate them as archaeologists and things like that, yeah. give them scholarships and, and so on. Uh, I don't know, well, as you see, dif many differences, but during that project um, they protected a few coastal platforms. Yeah. In Hangatetenga they built uh, wave breakers at the foot of the Hangatetenga Bay because the bay was being eroded by the waves. In um, uh, Rungavae, in the Ahu of Rungavae, that's in ruins there in, in the bay of Rungavae, uh, they recovered a statue that had fallen down a cliff uh, it was it's a small cliff but they recovered that statue with a crane in an amazing project do, do you know this guy Mine from Mine, Explora yeah, yeah. One of the, that's a cool guy one of the best drivers of the island Guillermo Nahoy no, Guillermo Nahoy Calderon yeah, yeah. right uh, well that guy worked on it and he told me how well it was an it's an amazing story one day we'll have to invite him to participate from this podcast so he can tell the oh, story oh yeah definitely yeah and um, then they also did some work in Hangahahade with a crematorium and, uh, well, a few things here and there. And a bit later, not UNESCO, I don't know who gave the money, but they rescued this statue recently for Paka in Pakaia, another yeah. statue that was falling down a cliff. And that was like 2014, maybe, something like that. Uh, the statue was rescued from... That was not UNESCO money, though. So... Uh, not counting the Pakaia statue, all the rest was UNESCO money. And the things that are related to this podcast are the Rungavae and the Hangatetenga um, work yeah. that actually protected those areas against erosion with wave breakers made out of huge rocks. It's temporary, it's a f temporary fix, but, but kind of helping out. Yeah. Right? So that's, as far as I know, that thing, $400,000 is the whole contribution of UNESCO to Easter Island from since 1995 when it 94 95 since the island was declared world heritage site yeah so for one thing you have UNESCO on that side right so on the other hand there has been a lot of uh, places one of midway through the article when I was reading mm -hmm. I remembered uh, in the East Peninsula of the island the probably one of the most uh, prone to erosion areas in the whole island, Boike Peninsula. Uh, there's a couple of platforms that've been, if almost completely gone, almost completely gone by now. They're like bits and pieces, a little bit of the structure still s standing there. Uh, so, so yeah, like it's been going for a little long while, really. There has been projects of reforestation, the Conaf did a lot of that you know mostly volunteers also I don't know if there was any money involved regarding anything but uh, just to reforest an area that's completely gone by the rain erosion wind erosion and weight crashing that's going on in that place which is expanding rapidly if you ask me I've been there many times I go there very often so I'm very familiar with the place and one of one of my favorite places on the island. And uh, so, yeah, definitely, definitely. It should it should be more visited by people, by local people, no, by please, the Rapanui no. people. Ah, yeah. By Rapanui yeah. people. Yeah. I encourage the Rapanui people to go and visit the archaeological sites, yeah. to go and visit the, 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 the cultural heritage that we have, to, to have more local awareness in that sense. Yeah. But uh, in a sense, I have mixed feelings <laughs> with this whole article. I have the feeling that it's good that we... Now we have somehow an attention and spotlight to the island and to the erosion itself in order to create projects to prevent this whole thing. On the other hand, 
it could have been a lot earlier. I don't really think it was needed for the New York Times for to do that. I thank them very much, but uh, I believe that the entities involved in this whole thing should have done something beforehand. Okay, so why... Uh... Ah, by the way, just a, a few nitpicks, right? Yeah. They say and they repeat several times Moai statues. Yeah, Moai Moai means statue. So yeah, Moai so statues are like no but need to be redundant with no, it, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a common mistake. It's the New York Times. It's people, yeah. you know, it's an don't, article. Don't don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. Yeah. Right? No. But Moai means statue. Yeah. So if you say Moai statues, you're saying statue statue. Right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's like going to I don't know, um, to uh, a Spanish-speaking country and say the estatua statues, right? Yes, yeah, estatua es statues. Estatua is in Spanish, so it's like going there. Ah, oh, they have these estatua statues, right? Yeah. No, so don't do that. And the other nitpick is that they mentioned the collapse. In one of the first few paragraphs, yeah, they yeah, say that... Yeah. Uh, I mean, they give away like this... Uh -huh. uh, one of the funny things that I found out is that they give away this, this brush-like perspective on the on like a chronological idea of what happened on the island, which is, you know, to be fair with them, it's the New York Times, you know, they don't really... It's not like they're, it's, they really care, right? So, yeah, they, 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 they get the ideas from somebody and then they, they just make it as much populous as possible in order for more people to be, to, to, to reclaim more people to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, in, in that sense, right, why did the New York Times decide to uh, write this article oh that's right very now. obvious that's right. that's very obvious man so like, like it's because we have right now this whole thing with climate change yeah this whole uh, debate with climate change with uh, pushing the agenda uh, global warming yeah. right so uh, obviously coming to Pacific Islands and especially this one that's one of the most popular from a cultural standpoint yeah. right uh, it's it's gonna be very effective, right? It's gonna be very effective for them. It's gonna be very effective to push that agenda, and it's very effective. Unfortunately for us, it's very effective because it might bring something, right? I yeah. hope it brings it, something. It, and, and, it, and, and, it, it, at least it opens the possibilities, right? Like at least it opens the conversation for people to to talk about it and to do things like that. So um, I believe that the whole idea. I believe that the whole idea of this of this article was to push the agenda. I mean, if you if you take a look at the related articles, they're all related to the same thing. They're, they're, they're yeah. to, to archaeological sites or important sites, cultural, uh, symbolic places that have been eroded, and how climate change is ruining some or changing somewhat the the the, the historical heritage that we have. Right? Yeah, I think Easter Island is the perfect example. So they just took it, you know, they took the chance. Yeah, I mean, well, it's always the, the like the micro version of what could happen to the rest of the world, right? Oh yeah, it's always yeah. a Jared Diamond mirroring yeah, of, yeah. Of, of, yeah, <laughs> of the civilization. Right? Yeah. yeah, well, but uh, I hope it works in that sense, right? It, obviously, we at least I am not a climate change denier. Quite the contrary, I'm quite worried about it, and, and I'm very aware, and I'm following all these. Um, IPCC, uh, the International Panel for Climate Change, yeah, where yeah. NASA is involved. I'm following all of that, and I, I really, uh, I'm really worried about how that's going to affect our island. Obviously, the erosion and the um, endangered ah, uh, endangered sites are have always been here and are part of, of, of the island since we can remember, since yeah. foreign research about ancient structures started. Uh, now, it might be going faster, I'm not sure about it, I, I don't know really, uh, mm -hmm. it, it might be going faster right now, but um, it's a little bit faster. Right? Yeah. So... And also you have, I think, a, like, side problems, right? Like, not only the, the, the erosion, the erosion might attack the most, mostly direct uh, cultural heritage of the island. You have the lack of rainfall that's been going on for the last five yeah, years. So that's what they missed. Like, for example, taking a picture of the crater of Rano Raraku. That's and, been uh, completely almost... It's, it's dry. It's dry. Definitely dry. Like, yeah. 
it, it, it was it used to be a freshwater lake it was three four meters deep with uh, we used to swim there I yeah. used to when I was a kid I used to like you could even dive and, like, dive dive it's and it had floating uh, islands of reeds and bulrushes mm-hmm. and uh, well right now it's 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 dry it's it's mud we, there's think, no water it's I think, mud I think we commented this in the last podcast yeah. but when when I was there with Bruno and we we, we, we filmed the, the, birds. the birds going no, there and eating it's crazy. freaking it crazy. crazy it was yeah. so dry it was getting so dry that the the, the, the water there formed ponds full of fish Mosquito fish, mosquito that were fish, mosquito there. fish, right? Yeah. Like they, that, those little mosquito fish that they use in like feed massages in yeah. Southeast Asia at some point. Yeah. And these birds, marine birds, they were eating them yeah. by the hundreds. Well, by the tens. Really. Yeah. They were dozens. Like 40, dozens, right? It was. There were like 45, 50 of them just flying around the crater. It was a, an insane look to it. You know? Yeah, it's the, one of the craziest things that have happened here. And that's thanks to climate change. To climate right? change. You also have the amount of plastic that comes around. And uh, with with the erosion, you have the amount of plastic that comes around the, from the ocean itself. Yeah. You know? There's all, whenever I walk down through the cliff areas, you know, I've been doing a lot of scouting. I've been doing a lot of, well, walking around. And, you know, have boys, you seen, yeah. boys, plastic pieces... Uh, you know, going around rods, broken rods, just going there, you know, and it, just arriving to the island from the, from the ocean. You know? It's so terrible when, um, okay, they go, they do a coast, coastal cleaning, right? Yes. They, 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 they send the volunteers and they clean a lot of coast and they do this like every three months or something like that. They, they go like there and they take out tons, of tons of plastic. plastic. Two, two tons, something crazy like two tons in like a 18, less like almost 18 kilometers. Yeah, right? it was like crazy amount of plastic. And it's crazy, and then the, it's clear, right? And it's clean, and then you go there two weeks later, and you start seeing all the microplastics and the small plastic and the big plastic and all of that crap. Yeah. You, yeah. you start seeing all of that again. It's it's, it's really terrible. Well, it, the island is in a in a very unfavorable position. Oh that, yeah, right. Because okay. it's in the middle of and this um, uh, cyclical, like whirlwind, whirlwind thing. Yeah. 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 So it, it, it it's supposed it's supposed to be one of the most concentrated pieces of ocean with plastic in it. Yeah, we, yeah, South Pacific one, yeah. we get most of it. Most of it. Uh, of course, it's a lot smaller than the North Pacific one that okay. has a continent made out of plastic. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. a continent. It's 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 huge. You don't see the water. If you go in a ship over there, I think cruise ships try to avoid it because they they you need You're like end up like the Titanic. Have you seen these uh, <laughs> ships that uh, that go through the ice? The, the ice. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the break, ice breaking, breaker, yeah, breaking ice, ice breaker. right? Yeah. Soon you'll need one for plastic. For plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's crazy. Well, also the amount of plastic it's been endangering the breeding sp- the breeding places for fish. And, and, the, turtles. and turtles and different things. They, I, I believe the the, the as Moy was doing some 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 research. Well, it's been doing research since. As Moy is from from the University the, of uh, the, the, the Catholic, Catholic, Catholic University, University of Valparaiso, of the North, Valparaiso yeah. or the North, the, the, North, North, the North, Catholic North. University of the North, the North. yeah, in Chile. So they're doing a lot of oceanographic like uh, research, and you know they've been doing a lot of going out with the fishermen to the different breeding spots and seeing the cyclical. Uh, breeding, uh, yeah. breeding uh, areas of fish, and they found out that the fish has been eating a lot of plastic essentially because they they they, they mistake the the color of the prey with the color of the, the plastic essentially. So they man, they, I'm, I am a spear fisher myself, and and the last few times we went spear fishing, when you open them up, <laughs> right, and and you take full the, of plastic, uh, yeah, and you open their their stomach. You find microplastics in there. Oh yeah, definitely. You find yeah. microplastics in some of them, at least. Yeah, it's it's just that I I believe it's somewhat. It has to do with the color of the microplastic that it's. Uh, uh, that's, th- fish in general fish have in no general. color. Or, no, or, no, they or, or they don't like, see color. Or maybe the size, it's the shape, it's the shape, shape size, and, yeah. yeah, something like that. It's just us and primates and yeah. some birds that see color. Color, all right. Yeah. Well, maybe it has to do with something with the shape or maybe the size of it that they eat it and eventually they. They yeah. get full of it, you know. 
Well, in the in the in the case of the um, the article, like if if we make an overview of endangered sites, right? Because obviously the New York Times article just focused on on the Akahanga area, um, the Orongo, Matangarahu, yeah, Matangarahu, and Tongariki, right? So of course, if we go along the west coast from south to north, we have the Orongo, Matangarahu, that yeah. has been. I mean, this is not a discovery from the New York Times. Let me tell you that a rock disappeared there in the 20th century. There's a rock that fell off the cliff, it's gone. Um, and uh, it had petroglyphs and it, it appears in the Alexander Agassiz uh, images he took from the island, from the, an oceanographic expedition to the island in 1905. Guy was up there, took pictures. 1914-15, uh, when Catherine Routledge took pictures yeah. of Orongo, there, that particular rock was gone, right? So in between we have Walter Knoche, Walter Knoche, a German uh, doctor that lived in Chile, and he took pictures in 1911. But we have no pictures from Orongo. I have never seen his pictures mm -hmm. from Orongo. So we would have to find out whether that rock disappeared or fell off before Walter Knoche in 1911, or after that expedition. Yeah. But it happened at some time between 1905 and 1914. Um, so it happened. We know it. It was happening at that time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, those uh, Matangarahu was a site that used to be visited a lot by tourists. Um, I remember going up there. It was limited yeah. to five tourists per turn. Yeah. Every turn, five people could go up the house of Matangarahu, the last house, yeah. and see the rocks with petroglyphs there that were really amazing. Those rocks yeah. are covered in bas relief and yeah. high relief petroglyphs. Birdman figures, Make Make, Komari. All over, all um, over the rocks. It's, it's incredible, incredible site. And um, the site was closed in 2012. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, 2012 was closed. So, to the public. So, why was it closed? Because there was a diagnosis that was made there. And in that diagnosis, it was uh, said that those rocks were in... Uh, terrible danger from falling off the cliff and that people going up there were not only risking themselves like their 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 own integrity but also they were putting lots of stress on the site so 100 no oh, at that time 2012 there were probably 60,000 tourists yeah. coming to the uh, 50 60,000 tourists Half now the it's amount. now it's twice the amount right in 2018 but um, there was this risk right so they closed it and at that time, President Piñera, Sebastián Piñera, and you can retweet this and you can, uh, well, spread this all over social media and I can send you the link. I'll put this link in the YouTube, uh, in the commentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put this link there. Uh, Sebastián Piñera said that he was going to give a lot of money, like 300 million pesos, Chilean pesos, mm -hmm. 338 Chilean pesos, million pesos, right? Um, for to protect that site, right? To uh, well, so they were closing it temporarily, so they could send scientists to make an assessment of the situation, and then find out the right way to protect the petroglyphs. Whether it was going to be reinforcing the cliff somehow, putting uh, wave breakers at the foot of that 1,000 feet high cliff, yeah. it's huge, and then uh, or. Worst case scenario, just Remove removing them. those rocks yeah. with the petroglyphs to a safer area, like killing completely the context, but at least it's better than losing those rocks forever. Yeah. Right? Um, that's 2012. Six years have passed. Two presidents have passed. Um, it was the no. second half of Piñera's uh, period, then Bachelet's period, now Piñera's back. Nothing has happened. The rocks are still there. They just send the group Restudio to do a very amateurish uh, assessment they did ah uh, they said oh there are petroglyphs of birdman here ah oh, there's a few petroglyphs of komari here and there and they started uh, assessing the houses man of the ceremonial village of orongo that's a restored village why are they assessing a restoration when we have william malloy's um uh, we have william malloy's um how do you call it the the, what he wrote about the restoration. Right? Well, the yeah, the accounts maybe, the documentation. The documentation of the restoration, yeah. right? So they are just assessing that, oh, the houses are like this and they are like that. And, man, they're just making a description of it? 
there's they filmed they took like pictures of the interior of the houses and so on right i don't well, know how, what, why, why is that useful right right now so uh maybe you can say oh the restoration went through this and through that and we are assessing the damage that co that's caused by planes or the damage that's that's caused by i don't know the wind the rain whatever right yeah that that's fine right but we are trying to save now the original stuff right yeah, yeah. which is like the most that that's the reason that they were sent for in the first place yeah so oh. so well that's that's uh well orongo was badly damaged during, during the rapa Nui movie in 1993 okay. too when it was filmed here so it was re-restored in the 1990s um and now the restudio thing that restored nothing they just made a diagnosis in 2013 i think or yeah i think 13 or maybe 14. uh nobody i don't know where the results are i don't know if, they, if we have them available on the island somewhere or you can check them on the internet not sure I have no idea. but nobody has done anything with those uh, with uh, results right mm -hmm. so i don't know what they said about the rocks what's their recommendation of so what to do just, so they essentially they just left it on standby and what would be the backlash Eternal. if if <laughs> you and me right went yeah. there and and saved those rocks and kind of grab those rocks and and, and with oh, trucks yeah. and and what yeah. would be the backlash? Oh, uh, like in the world, oh, those yeah. stupid Indians, Polynesian Indians, are doing that uh, thing. They are damaging UNESCO. UNESCO. UNESCO would, 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 oh, would, that would be it. that would be that would be a big thing. That would be a big thing. So should we just wait that these uh, rocks fall over? Or? Like they finish their, I mean, uh, they can take all their time in the world. Like the, on one hand, New York Times is saying that those th those places are endangered. Les Studio said in 2013 that those rocks are endangered. Uh, back then, in 1993, we knew they those we rocks were endangered. We already know the problem. What's the solution uh, for it? Right. In 1905, a rock after 1905, a rock fell down from Orongo. If that was not very clear message that those rocks were endangered, it's been a hundred years, 110 years, 115 years. And no one's doing anything, anything about Matangarahu. It's crazy. It's, it's completely ridiculous. Crazy, yeah. Dumb. So yeah. Well, for, for we have that. Well, we have that. We have the the negligence the negligence of the government. We have the negligence of the of the institutions are um, just somehow there to protect or to assess these issues, right? And they're not, not, they're not simply not doing anything. So my thing, my, my question is <clears throat> whether there's going to be real solution right, right now, whether it's going to be real opportunities for the island to do something, or is this just going to be one of uh, many publications that are going to go back to the, the, to the old deposit. Yeah. And then one day the New York Times will say, will come back 20 years from now when the rocks already fell, and they said they will say, "Hey, we said we sh you should have done something. You didn't." So this is something we talked in the previous podcast, yeah, yeah. right? In uh, replicas uh, versus pres yeah, yeah. and preservation, preservation conservation, yeah. right? But but this is uh, like a slightly different approach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sites have been endangered by yeah. animals. They have been endangered by people. They, well, they, that's another and, thing. And, and they animals. were endangered by yeah. We, we talked about this in the previous one, yeah. but but going into the people, right? Yeah. All right. So I like this the approach uh, Malloy had to the sites that were endangered by people. For example, Tahai, yeah. right? that uh, the urban area. I mean, if we can call it urban. Back then, 1966, yeah. it didn't have any, even electricity. But the the town, the village, was kind of spreading. It yeah. was opening and getting close to Tahai, closer to Tahai. So Tahai was endangered because people just built houses from any rock that they could find. So since Tahai had um, well lots of rocks because it's an archaeological yeah. uh, a huge ceremonial platform three of them in fact and lots of moai lots of top knots right it was so endangered that when they built the cemetery they used a damn top knot from yeah, Ajo Ajo Riku, yeah, right yeah, yeah. okay so the restoration that Malloy did of Ahuta High saved that place right because since it was restored and the statues were upright and the ceremonial platforms were now clean and beautiful and uh, well, everybody could appreciate how valuable yeah. they, they were. And they were all, oh, of course we are not taking those rocks now. Right? Oh, they, yeah. they could take rocks from elsewhere uh, to build houses or whatever they wanted to build. 
So that's the approach, right? Okay, it's endangered, let's save it in one way or another. And res restoration was the way of solving those sites at that time, when people were the danger. Um, now, when tourists are the danger, what have um, the authorities done? Uh, at the time of CONAF, making uh, limit trails. Lines, yeah, yeah. Trails, limit lines. Limit lines and signs and trails yeah. and all of that that we don't like, but okay, maybe it's a necessary evil for the time being, until yeah. we find a better way of, of solving that issue. Yeah. Okay, that's to summarize that. But now when the danger is, I don't, I'm not saying it's a current danger, we know already that it's a danger that comes from long back in time, right? It, yeah. It's since forever, pretty yeah. much, since human occupation, because obviously before humans, the island was eroding too, yeah. but there was no, no mm. cultural feature and danger, yeah. right? But since human beings arrived here, and who knows, maybe there were Ahu that were... I don't know, have you seen the Koteniu platform or Ohau? Yeah, 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 Ohau yeah, in, yeah. In, that's in, on the edge of the cliff. Uh, uh, right there. Half of the platform has already fallen down to the ocean. Yeah, Half great. of the pl platform is gone. Yeah. And that happened, and when Alfred Metro was here with the Franco-Belgian expedition in they the 1930s, took photos, yeah. took photos, and it, it was like really on the edge, but not yet fallen, right? It now fell down the cliff, half of the platform. You can see half of it. And you can see some of the statues there, and they are a, a lot worse than the pictures that um, appear in the New York Times article. Oh, the statues yeah. of Ohau mm -hmm. and Cote, Cote, or Cotteniu. Right? So, <coughs> maybe there was a previous Ahu there, and that, that, let's that, say 500 mm -hmm. years ago. It was even uh, further west, but the piece of the island that, that was oh, yeah. there is gone. Right. Well, so then they, <clears throat> the islanders built a new Ahu further uh, like In. inland, and that was also gone. Right. Yeah. So maybe we should just build another Ahu that's further inland. inland. Well, <clears throat> it's the same thing that's happening, for example, when uh, when you go to the Roijo area, yeah. by, right by the cliff area, you can see the cracking. That, that's crazy. That's, that's freaking crazy. Like yeah. it's a crack that's about a meter long between the island and the and the rest of the piece of rock that's just falling off it's just like taking apart this the island is just ripping apart little by little and you can see that going on yeah and nick casey should have taken uh, or or the guy with the pictures i don't remember you joshua i think he should have uh, hiked a little. kudos to him because he did a terrific job with the drone pictures but i mean that one yeah uh, that, the, the crack, that crack big there. crack near mm -hmm. via may right yeah, yeah. uh that huge crack there is is insane. Yeah, that area between like Anatepora and Anacacenga, that's full of I cracks. could swear that when I started guiding around 2009, 2010, I walked along that area, there was no crack. I remember that uh, when I was guiding for Explora Hotel in 2012, like to, towards my, the end of my tenure with freelancing for Explora Hotel, um, there was already a crack, but it was a minimal crack. It was a very oh, yeah. small one. And it's been six years since since then, and now the crack is the size of... I don't know, how, how many... How big do you think that crack is? It's how two long? meters? Uh, like, how, how long or like how... Like wide, how wide how is that wide crack? crack? It's about two a meter and a half. Meter meter and half well, it depends because it's not regular, right? But it's, there are there are spaces which are more separate, especially at the middle part, right? Yeah. Because it's, the middle part is separating like wider and then you, it just narrows down to the edges but it's about I would swear that the, some of the, you the wider jump. parts you could jump from one you could easily yeah. jump from one side to the I'd other I swear that some of the wider parts are like two meters yeah, uh, yeah two meters are like like seven feet seven feet yeah. around seven feet yeah. long which is a lot and it's a big piece of rug it's like we're talking about a cliff that's probably around well it's not a hundred meters from, yeah. from the ocean but it's about fifty or thirty which is a lot of rock volumetrical speed. I don't know, like two weeks ago that crack was still there. I don't know if it's still there. Maybe it already fell down to the ocean. It could have yeah. been. Yeah. yeah. So, like... So, and, and other endangered sites on the same west coast is Anakaitangata, Anakai for example. Well, that's completely gone already. Like, I, I believe there's barely any piece of, of, of pictographies over there. Anymore. It's crazy how that happens. I remember, well... When I when when I started guiding, Anakaitangata was like a must see place. Yeah, yeah, because, definitely. Well, Anakaitangata is a small cave. It's a, sm a small coastal cave that has a relatively high ceiling uh, with uh, rock paintings. 
right? Rock paintings, it's made out of keho stone, so it's like a... It's not slate, it's uh, similar to slate, but it's, uh, yeah, it's andesite or yeah. basaltic rock that is cracked into flakes, right? Yeah. There are several different layers, uh, very, very thin layers, so it's vulnerable to lots Jeez. of movement, even yeah. telluric movements and wave action, vibrations, planes landing. So it started falling and most of the paintings are gone, rock paintings that were there with red and white. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that site is terribly endangered. I'm sure the waves contributed to the fall of oh, the Oh, yeah. Of well, the it's, in right, it's right next also to the, to, to the earth strip of the, of the airport. Yeah, my, yeah. my brother Sebastian took uh, a video of waves getting all the way in. Oh, and when the, there was a huge uh, uh, swell coming in. There was a storm and a huge swell. And the waves were getting all the way into, into the cave. So I'm sure that they have some consequences. Uh, there were huge rocks that fell over there. So that's another endangered site on the west coast. And the west coast is oh, supposed they, to be the the, 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 the calm one. Yeah, the, yeah. The, it's the leeward side. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but again, like and it, so we've already been losing all this stuff, right? So there's a lot of things. There's a well in Mount Apare in, next to Mount Apareje, there's a line of rocks there, and there's a you know like leftovers of whatever platform that was and you know all right let, let's go to that side of to the that island yeah, the that's the, the one east, you love the most yeah, yeah yeah the east peninsula of the island yeah Boike. Boike. so that place it's right it's a wreck when it comes to erosion yeah it's a wreck you know like half of the half of the hill that's it's completely gone the yeah. next to it there used to be a platform there's you can still see the visage of the statue there yeah and it's completely gone like there's only well fairly a 10 meter long wall stone wall left over with two rocks stacked up one to to each other lined up in 10 meters so <clears throat> it's pretty much gone there's another one midway through through like um the the reforested area which is completely gone too it's a it was i bet it was a beautiful platform that has trachyte and basalt basaltic yeah. of different colors you know white and, and darker colors that's ahu kiri deva ahu kiri deva with um, one statue that was recovered from by the belgian yeah. by a belgian excavation over there and you know the platform was left over there and you know like the time in erosion has been taking its swelling and, and yeah and, and, and it's completely there by itself you know by no there's nothing around it there are animals in all over in the cliffs of the southern cliffs of the Boike Peninsula there's a section that's in a negative angle so normally the cliffs have a slight yeah. slope that goes towards the ocean mm -hmm. right and there are some cliffs that are sheer like perfectly vertical, vertical. Yeah. but there's a section in like in front of Motu Maratiri mm -hmm. that has a like a negative, negative angle, angle. Yeah. so that part is about to be completely destroyed. Well, the waves have already uh, um, built like that. Like they have already undermined the whole. Oh yeah, cliff. definitely. Well, and they're, they're going and, and, and like, caving into the. You, you can see there, like pieces. Like you can, if you if you go there, you know, if you ever go there. I'm I've talking to there. the I'm going ah, talking to right, the pop. All right, right. So if you ever go there. And you take a look at the at the cliff, and you try to reconstruct the pieces. You can you can even see and try to reconstruct the pieces that are at the bottom because they're yeah. still full of vegetation. You can see how the thing it's just it's just pushing down. Yeah, it's being pushed down. It's not even like it fell over and the and the and the rocks fell over in in whatever direction. The the whole cliff just pushed down because of the same thing that you're saying. There's a negative. There's a negative negative angle behind that yeah and the whole weight just pushes down the cliff and it tears apart everything on its way. yeah because there's nothing there's supporting, nothing supporting it underneath, underneath. yeah so it, it, it makes this crazy looks into it you know and there are rocks that probably have been falling i bet that place every now and then there's a rock or two big boulders that fall over back again into that area yeah. and 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 it's a shame to see it because I bet boy, that peninsula was a lot bigger than it is today. Yeah, so, well, how much of that can be attributed to climate change? Because, yeah, that, that's the whole thing. That's the whole point of the article of the New York Times. And that's the, 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 
that even that's though the aim. That's the aim even though it. it's it's true that the island is eroding and even though it's true that some archaeological sites lots of archaeological sites yeah, because are they are yeah. located mostly along the coastline are endangered um, well how how much of that can be attributed to climate change right yeah well it's hard to say really. well I, because that this has ha hard. been happening since since, since, be since not well, before climate change it's a, a, like yeah no before that probably but post-industrial we have lots of information yeah. uh, about this when the temperature above pre-industrial pre average was only 0 0.5 degrees celsius this was happening now it's like a, more than one I, I think i heard it's 1.5 degrees celsius yeah, above pre-industrial <laughs> levels and if it reaches two we are doomed right so uh but how how much of that can be attributed to climate change? I don't I don't really see a sea level rise on the island. No, no. But 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 I guess it makes the effect of the whole thing eroding out by the wave crashing. That apparently seems like it. But whether whether so, it's climate change or not, then that's 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 one of the main points that I wanted to talk about. Is that whether the aim of the article was to attribute these things to t climate change or not, it's to me as a as a Rapa Nui, I don't care. Um, I care about you know doing for once in a while something for this whole thing. I mean, it's hard to say whether it's a it's <clears throat> it's it's climate change to blame because, as you said before, it's been happening since forever. Yeah, you know, it's a natural it's a natural. I guess continuum of things that's, uh, that's going to occur. The current climate change is not natural. Current no, climate no, no, change but, but, is totally but, yeah, anthropogenic. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably the amount of plastic, probably the lack of uh, uh, the 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 industrial fishing, probably that I could totally blame to climate change. Yeah. Because it's Rano, Raraku, Raraku, getting dry. Getting dry. Yeah. yeah, that's totally to blame to climate change. Now the rest of it, you know. Let's get it on it, you know, like, I don't care. If it's going to help, if it's going to help the whole idea of preserving these places and it's going to put them in the spotlight, if we're going to, if we're going to preserve these places, you know, you know, like, uh, we should do it. We should, we should put it on board. And I guess, you know, it's, to me, it's really hard to say whether it is or not, because, you know, I'm, I'm not an oceanographer. I haven't studied really much about the historical uh you don't need to, to study that you've been there you've I've seen been with there, your right? own eyes so, and you have common sense as yeah, far as yeah, i know yeah definitely but uh but so systematically speaking i guess the whole idea of this of this uh article was to blame it on climate change to our human intervention and i guess it's okay to do it in a sense if it helps I think I'm I'm up for it, you know. I don't know what you think. No, I'm I'm a pursuer of truth, man. I if, if they want to spread lies, no matter how good the intentions, I'm not up up for it, right? So I'm not saying that the New York Times article is spreading lies. Um, I don't think that they are blaming like directly to climate change the things that are going on. I think that obviously climate change is there, added into the equation yeah yeah so there, people can maybe mistakenly draw this own con do, this do. conclusion yeah which uh, obviously wouldn't be the right conclusion no, you know no, it wouldn't, that but there are lots of um, people especially well in chile we know about it chile is probably the country that has the most analfabetos funcionales in, uh, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. world yeah, right yeah, definitely uh, functional analphabets Alphabet. right yeah, yeah. So um, people that read, but they don't get what what they read. They no right? comprehension. No, no. Uh, maybe it's this northern hemisphere has less, but it has some people that are like that. So yeah. when they see climate change added into the blender, and they see island eroding, right? there was this uh, this huge rain the other day, and I yeah. saw it from in Vinapu. I was getting into Vinapu, and you have a look at the sea, and the sea is totally brown. Yeah, because well, the rain is washing away oh, chunks oh. of generating sheet erosion. So when there are slopes, the rain kind of washes away uh, levels of topsoil from the slope, 
and takes that all the way to the sea where it gets dissolved, right? So between the sea and the rain, they are doing a very good job at getting rid of the island, right? Yeah. It's terrible for us, but they are doing it, right? And in Poike, it's really, really yeah, bad. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the places, that, one yeah. of the places that's been yeah, more but, prone to it. Yeah. But curiously, climate change is not uh, generating Creating more rain. rain. Yeah, it's, it's it's actually bringing lots less. of droughts here. Yeah. It's there's lots of less rain here. Yeah. Uh, so far, we've not been able to perceive the sea level rise. So obviously, we know that uh, sea level rise has been affecting other islands in Kiribati, in Tuvalu, yeah. um, and in some atolls that are very low, low-lying low islands line, have been yeah. affecting affected a lot by by it. So far, I haven't seen it here. So, okay, so if if they want to make like a diagnosis, okay, sea level rise is going to cause this and that. And the New York Times article kind of, well, speculates that climate change and, and global warming and the increase more, like half a degree more than the current increase in temperature is going to flood Tongariki, it's going to flood some, but, something but else. My, my, well, my question, I go then like this. Well, what are we going to do about it? What are Whether, you going to do about it? Where are we going to do about it? That's the thing. Like that's the question. I well, think. I'm like, spreading. Like, I'm spreading this information everywhere, that's, that's, right? And yeah, it's, no, it's kind of no, well, like, raising not, raising awareness. I mean, what can we do? Yeah, what what, what that, can we that, do? That's if, thing, I, like, it's what I said before. If we go to Orongo and, and take, take the archaeological the rocks, yeah, site yeah, and we like, take them out of there, exactly, they're going to exactly, put so. us in jail, man. Yeah. We're, we're going to jail, and, yeah, and we're so, going to screw our lives if we do that. So, yeah, so it, it's uh, so. What can we do? There are people that should do things, should do, and these yeah. are the people that have the power to do things. So and that's that's why I mean. So I'm like, raising awareness, right? What, I mean, we're not, doing this podcast. Here. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, I'm not saying we as us. I'm saying we as the community. We as the public right. community. I'm, right. I'm I'm saying us as the entities involved into this whole thing. Right? Yeah, not us as personally you and me. Probably yes, but you know, how can we? Uh, involved what's going to happen with all this thing because you know we've been talking about you know everybody knows that New York Times is pushing the agenda on on climate change whether that's which is affected, fine which is fine you it's know fine. It's a, you know they can do whatever they want <coughs> but but the thing is whether it's climate change or not whether it's plastic or not whether it's rain erosion or not how are we going are we going to do something about it and if we are what is it that we're going? Are we going to wait another hundred years to 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 do something? To to take pictures? Are we going to remember this place as a as a through historical photos, or as they said on? Or Man, uh, if if I were you, I would be making a huge database of photographs of sites that are in danger yeah. man, because uh, that's gonna it, be lost in, in 20 meantime. years man none of them will be here I, so I the, have already a, a relatively nice database of those sites but yeah it's the, if I get the chance I mean when I mean, I, this weekend and, for example I'm now, gonna go out there doing that again uh, some how, more pictures and how about all those places all those burial sites are along the coast what are we gonna do about those? Did they they because they never, they all talk about the big platforms and the big civic centers that that that, that are in danger? But I don't know, man. For example, Ahutepeu. Do you think Ahutepeu is in danger? Well, it's going to. Well, yeah, definitely. It's going to really? be at some point. Well, not immediately. It's it's, it's not two hundred meters away yeah, from the yeah, cliff. It's not. It's not really in danger. Probably my. Probably my Takitemoa is more in danger than Ahutepeu in that sense. It's still 30 meters, 40 meters away from the cliff, yeah. right? The Teniu is like... Dream- so the, of the examples, we, yeah, Matangara, Huana Kaitangata... And those are all then, along then the cliff. Then we have Koteniu. So the those are all uh, going through uh, the Ahu next to Mauna Pareje. Those are all next to the cliff. Those are all already being... Drawn well, by erosion. In so. the south coast, we also have some, right, that are pretty endangered. And Hangate, Hang- mm-hmm. that one's really close. Uh, at least one of the wings is really yeah. close. Um, Akahanga, the the, the 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 hole is getting larger. Under, oh yeah, uh, the, uh, that that, that little Akahanga, be- between. Right? Yeah, that that small platform between Akahanga 
that yeah, the the, uh, the Runga Wa Ayahu that, yeah. that we mentioned already. Yeah, that's, uh, um, very endangered. That's, that's very much. Maybe Onemakihi, it's really close to Onemakihi. It's getting closer to, to the, 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 the statues that are fallen in the back of it. Yeah. Um, but those are like the most early. So, you, what, what should we do? We should first put our priorities together. Yeah. Like, uh, Okay, See, these the are the endangered? sites that are most endangered, and, and and work on those sites. I would, I'd like, I'd like another UNESCO Japan man, but I'm not going. I'm, I'm not expecting anything from UNESCO anymore. I, uh, they did that. Okay, thank you very much, and that's about it. Right? So, uh, should we call the Japanese government again? Sergio Rapo was a big part in that um, in, in obtaining that uh, support from the Japanese, right? He was in great relation. Well, he was uh, the, governor. the governor. He was in great relationships with the Japanese government and with lots of Japanese archaeologists that could contribute with it. So, um, he, well, he's very influential. He was very influential, and uh, he was. helped to ma manage to get that support, right? Um, other people, like at that time there was Jose Miguel Ramirez here and he was um, working for CONAF, the National Forestry Corporation that was at that time in charge of the park, National Park. So he also was part of the, the project, right? Yeah. But what about the current authorities, right? Mau so, Henua. Yeah, but Mao Henua is just looking at, at its own belly button. Yeah, man. Uh, oh. we, we, we should start looking outwards. Why don't yeah. why Mao Henua is still not yet an ambassador? But don't I mean don't get me started on the on the on the <laughs> board of directors, yeah. man. I, I I mean with all due respect for for them, I don't have a bad opinion on on them as an in, in an individual level. But we need someone that has the skills, diplomatic skills and linguistic skills. Yes. Someone that can travel around the world and try to get money for projects. So give them, give that guy a year. If in a year he doesn't get money, guy or girl, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. Um, don't assume. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if uh, if they don't get the money, <laughs> right? If Xur doesn't get the money, yeah. Uh, well, that that's it, right? Out out of there. Get out of there. Get out well, of here. And then and, and, then, and then we try somebody else, right? But but and. If that person yeah, gets money, he that's, keeps it's, that's, it's, it's that's his job or it's it's or whatever exert job, exert exert job, I don't know. Well, the, 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 that's interesting. There, it has there's no PR for the whole Mount Hino. Well, they've been having a lot of trouble even with the local community. Man, maybe they think that the money that enters national park from the ticket is is enough, right? I maybe think they, they think it's no, a lot, I think, right? I think I think they see it as an enterprise rather than a, than a, than an institution that that that. So should have to wait. some some people in there definitely do yeah and they are the ones that shouldn't be there yeah it's, it's be, not a it's not a but, company but, it's but not it's, they it, see it as a company they don't see it they, I, they I should know they should not be there and I say it openly here uh, uh, they should not be there yeah no definitely. this is something that you you have to care about yeah it's and not only that, care about but, but but you have to get put some your, balls you have put to some put, balls into it and just uh, you know put your boots in and just work for it. And I don't see them doing that. I see them worrying for other stuff. Yeah, there are some hard workers in there. There are some hard workers. I mean, in, in every there. in every place, there's always a hard worker, right? There, there, there's there's the three, four hard workers, and they work for all the other yeah, 100 yeah. It's employees. A, it's a Pareto right? distribution. Yeah, yeah. Twenty percent of the employees do eighty percent of yeah. the work. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, nah, but well, it's not the idea to criticize them. They they have been Why not? for a. Because I mean, Why not? this podcast. Why we? No, it, this podcast is not about Mao Henua. We no, can talk oh, yeah, about yeah. Mao we Henua do, later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh yeah. I don't yeah. care. I, yeah. I'm not afraid of anybody, and I say yeah. what I think. Yeah, me. Uh, I mean, me too. I I think nobody is. Nobody. It's, it's not Mao Henua's fault that the statues are about to fall, oh, but no. it's gonna be Mao Henua's fault if Whenever after they... this New York Times article. I Nothing mean, is getting okay. Done. This this has been. This is the heads up. Okay, yeah. you've been there for a year, a year and a half. Okay, now you have a heads up, but you cannot expect that New York Times journalist, you cannot expect, expect that Nick Casey is also bringing help and aid to the island, so That's right? the thing. How are, are we waiting for somebody from outside? I'm that's sure lots of like, people are waiting for some, yeah, so someone that's, from outside. That's, that's the thing. That's the victim mentality. 
Oh, I'm going to wait for my savior to come here and help me. Dude, get your balls together and let's do something here. I'm talking to you, Mount I'm talking to you, National Park Academy. I'm talking to you, government. I'm talking to you, Sebastián Piñera. Dude, no, we should but, get it. Yeah, but even, even if you think that, that we need uh, international support to do something, and I do think that. Oh, yeah. I do think that. But that's not but, the main But you support. should get it. You should get it. You should not just wait for it. And, and kind of, oh, it would be so nice if someone would help us. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, that's a big go out there. Go out there. Send someone Dude. out there. Send a diplomat out there. Try to get money. Man, how many companies out there want to evade taxes and have <laughs> amounts of money that, that you can, can't even imagine and they want to evade taxes? I don't care if it's dirty money. I don't care if it's blood money. I don't care if it's <laughs> money from the Cayman Islands or if it's money from from a tax haven. Uh, I I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, man, send emails and twi- tweets to Elon Musk. Send tweets to Dude, uh, Jeff, Elon Musk. Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Yeah. Right? Send Jeff money to Bezos, to, to them. Kim, Kim Jong Un, man. I don't, I don't <laughs> care, right? Dude, bring your missiles in. And we put, we'll help you sell missiles. <laughs> we will help you sell missiles if you if you help us with with this, right? But but do something, man. Yeah. Uh, we we yeah. we should do something. Even if if we cannot, even if we I need mean, international yeah, support and like, so on, we should go out to try to get yeah, that international yeah, support. Definitely, and and that's the whole thing. We should push it from inside out. That's the thing. The help begins with us, not with them. Yeah, yeah. All right, All man. Right. So. Uh, any final thoughts? Well, I guess we pretty much covered everything, but again, mixed feelings about it. A lot of stuff going on. I think uh, we should start getting our stuff done together here, and we should start moving our wheels from inside out, and then and then ask for somebody to, you know, to do everything from the outside. Thinking about it, this idea of the diplomat that goes around the world trying to get money to do projects on the island, man, it's a pretty cool job. It uh, is, dude. Like, yeah. if you want, if you want me to do it, I'll yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Mao Henua, hire this guy. He speaks like 27 languages, and um, yeah, he knows how to. Funny accent in every single one of those languages. I, uh, yeah, I can cry whenever you want me to. So. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a good actor. So. Sure. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's been uh, great um, joining you for this dissection of the New York Times article, and uh, we'll see you later with another yep. podcast. Goodbye. Bye bye.